pretty cool. So this is the HPA Bullpup Blaster. It's working. I'm very happy with this. Uh, this turned out really cool. I'm incredibly happy with this. Um, yeah, uh, let's talk about it a bit. Uh, this is a Bullpup Blaster, as you can see. Magazines go in the back like that. And then you shoot like this. Pretty cool. Uh, there are ball detents for the magwell, so you do not have any magazine release you have to worry about. Just stick in and take out a magazine, like so. Uh, other stuff about this, this is using a Cosmic Nomad HPA Core. This is made by Roboman Automation. Uh, in all of my previous blasters, I've used a V1 Nomad, which has one hole uh, for the air to go into. Uh, he recently made a new version, V2 Nomad, which has two holes. So instead of having the uh, pneumatic cylinder, which is up here, which moves the bolt back and forth, and instead of having that come off of the same airline that feeds the tank, uh, instead the air is going into the tank and then there's an outlet from the tank that then goes up to the cylinder. It seems to be working just as well. Um, other than that, I haven't really noticed any other differences, other than it's so much more powerful. Um, I shot myself in the hand with this a few minutes ago, and it really hurt. Um, like, at that point blank range like this, it really hurt. Uh, on the old one, it didn't hurt that bad, but on this new tank, it's much more powerful. It has more air volume, I believe. Uh, it, it really is not great to be hit with at that point blank, uh, like, literally point blank right here. Um, but yeah, it's more powerful, which is good. Um, now, this is uh, essentially the same operating principle as the HPA thing, which is right here. Uh, I took all the bits out of it in order to put together this guy. Um, but the HPA thing just is a RAM like that, that when the pneumatic cylinder, which is normally up here, pushes this back, this goes forwards and seals the breech. Now on this, it's got a little gear somewhere around here uh, that when this top thing goes back, that bottom thing goes forwards, just redirects that force. But in a bullpup orientation, uh, you don't need that little gear in order to make space uh, in, in the front. Um, you can just have the whole pneumatic cylinder up here, uh, and then there is a rod, which this charging handle is a part of, that then connects to a ram. So if I prime this back and you look down the ram hole a bit, you'll probably be able to see, yeah, there on top, there's that yellow rod. So that is directly connected to the cylinder up there. And that also allows this nicer packaging of the return elastic. Uh, and it's just really compact and snazzy. And I like it a lot. Um, other stuff about to this. Uh, it uses the same uh, Arduino code as the HPA thing. Uh, because the operating um, system is very similar. You can use the same code. So this can do full auto, semi-auto, three round burst, all that stuff. Uh, depending on... Uh, how you set up the code. Um, it has a variable, uh, you can change the milliseconds between when trigger pull and when dart come out. Uh, you can also change the delay that it takes for each trigger pull to fully reset. So you can spam this as much as you want and it will only fire as fast as the mechanism can keep up with. You cannot short stroke this by pulling the trigger too fast, which is nice. Um, and that code is by Wonderboy uh, for the original HPA thing. Uh, another benefit of this sort of layout of the pneumatic cylinder is you can actually have a proper charging handle now. So on the HPA thing, it didn't really have a way to manually um, stick a dart in it without firing one shot just to get the system to cycle and put a dart into itself. On this, you do have a charging handle. So you can just do that. Which is fun. Um... I guess that does technically mean that you could build this without the pneumatic cylinder in the back. And then just do this as like a manually operated bolt action kind of thing. 
I don't know. Interesting. Um, what else? It's got some Picatinny up here. Picatinny up here, so you can put your scope on it. It's got some Picatinny down here, so you can put a uh, foregrip on it. I like holding it like this so far. Uh, this front twirly looking muzzle thing, that twirl goes all the way back along the side. Looks very nice, very nice. I'm incredibly happy with how this turned out aesthetically. Like, look at that. Oh, that looks so cool. Oh, oh, that's sick. Um, but this front thing uh, is threaded on. Now it's not threaded on uh, with the intent with the intent of people like uh, putting um, like swapping this out for any reason. Uh, it's just on there because that was the easiest way to get this yellow piece onto this pink piece. Um, but it has the nice side effect of being, hey, if you want, you know, a larger orange muzzle for certain events, you could print a bigger one of these. Or if you want to play on like closed field or something like that, you could print this nice and short, get a little bit extra shortness out of the design, uh, even more compact. Um, but as it is, this is incredibly compact. This is really nice. Um, do I have any blasters I could compare this to size-wise? Oh, I have a breacher on the floor. You know, as one does. So, here it is. Compared to a breacher. Sort of, there you go. There's, there's your expert size comparison. So it's got a little bit more length of pull, so the stock's a little bit longer compared to the back of the grip. A little bit longer, which feels very nice in a bullpup configuration, and the front is obviously way shorter. So yeah, that is this bullpup HPA blaster, which doesn't have a name yet. Um, I'm incredibly happy with how this has turned out. Uh, I This is the first prototype print of it, and I've done no re no reprints of this yet. Um, like, right off the printer, it works. That is so cool. Um, uh, things I need to do. Uh, I need to add two more screws here, because this piece that holds the Nomad is kind of separating from the turnaround a little bit. I uh, just need to add some screws there to keep this squished together a bit better. Uh, another thing is I forgot to put a barrel retention of any type in this. There's no collet, there's no screw, there's nothing. The barrel is just kind of jammed into the O-rings of the turnaround right now, and the barrel could theoretically fly out the end as I'm doing firing demos today, which would be not great. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't think I will do that, but... Uh, I forgot to put barrel retention in this, so I'm going to edit the files later and put a set screw that just keeps the barrel in place. I'm not sure which direction I'm going to have the screw pointing, um, but there will be one in there somewhere. Or I could make this thing into a collet for the barrel, which would be neat, but the problem with that right now is that the barrel is actually way shorter than the length of the blaster. Um, I'm not sure if I could get light in here far enough to show you, but the barrel is way deep in there. Uh, hmm. There you go. If, if I stick this tool in there, the barrel tip is actually at the end of that thing down there. So it's essentially lined up with the end of the uh, charging handle. So the barrel goes from here to here right now, um, which might be shorter barrel than is uh, recommended for this Nomad. I don't know. Uh, the optimal barrel length for the V2 Nomad, uh, compared to the V1 Nomad, but I don't know. Food for thought. So, yeah. I'm gonna load up some more darts and shoot them, and then that's the end of the video. Nice, casual video. Oh, there's my darts on the floor. I like doing these sort of like impromptu videos as as soon as the thing starts working. I hit the record button. I go, hey, look at this thing. 
uh, very genuine reactions to the thing that I've been putting together for the past few hours actually working for the first time. I love it. Uh, these are some siren darts on top, and we've got an old worker uh, Gen 2 or 3 dart, and then some various adventure force and modern worker dart things in there. Let's try and get you some nice video of this. See, the thing is, my computer screen is right behind there, so I don't want to shoot that. Here, here you go. Now I can shoot at the camera without hitting my computer screen. Ah, I hit my hand. Ow. Ugh. Oh my god. It's terrifying. Ugh. How many more darts do I have? Probably zero. Mm hmm. Man, I'm so good at making YouTube videos, it's crazy, I know, right? I don't know, I think there are more darts. Yep. Alright, now we are empty. You can check if it's empty or full by just doing that and then looking in through the little window. It's actually clearer on the side that I can see. That's so fun. Oh, that's so awesome. A few more darts. <laughs> 